Hello artists, welcome to my little art studio. My name is Miss Jerry and I'm here to show you a quick lesson on string poles. They are so fun and different and they come out with amazing designs. Here's what you need. A piece of printer paper folded and sandwiched in a hardback book. Some string, cotton string preferably, and you will soak it into some liquid watercolors. Okay, you will lay your string on your paper in whichever way you want. Make sure a little bit of it is sticking out. We will pull the string out, press on the book, and you will see your design. Yeah, you got to find your design. And all kinds of things can happen with these amazing designs each time you lay a different string in there. Let me try it again and show you what happens. Let me pull it out really quick and discover something new every time. Ah, it looks amazing. You will wow your friends. I hope that you will try this. Thank you. Bye-bye. Teacher John, let's draw a rocket going to the moon. To make a rocket ship, draw a triangle on your paper. Then add some circles for the windows. You can even add some fire coming out of the back of your rocket ship. To draw the moon, make a circle on your paper. Then add smaller circles on the moon for the craters. Don't forget to draw dots on your paper for all of the stars in space. How do we get into space? A rocket can travel into space. What are the holes on the moon called? Craters. The holes on the moon are called craters. And don't forget to share your work. See you soon. Hi, my name is Kendra Malcolm and today we're gonna do scribble shading. So you'll notice I'm scribbling very fast and I'm trying to scribble in the direction of my texture here. And right now I'm just focusing on the highlights. So I'm gonna spend quite a bit of time on the highlights. It's probably the most important part of this. And then I'm going to get into a little bit of color and eventually use black just to make everything pop. And of course, to focus on our shadows. I'm gonna leave the nose and the eye area uh, because those actually kind of hold their own with the, with the paper. I don't think I need to go in and add too much to them. There we go. So the mid-tone is kind of just the yellow on top of the page, and then the highlight has the white. Now I'm gonna use marker for the black, some small controlled scribbles now. And this is going to tie everything together. So it's gonna allow us to give it a little bit more form. See, I'm pressing a lot lighter here, a little shadow under the ear, a little shadow under this ear as well, just to help those areas pop. Really gotta focus on the shadows. Shadows and highlights, that's the main thing. 
don't want to create too many outlines. You just want to focus on those value changes and that's going to give you your shape. All right, I'm trying to do this in one minute. I know I'm getting close. Yeah, let's call it. All right, I hope you enjoyed that quick tutorial. Bye. So lilies are probably one of the best flowers to look at if you want to understand the different parts of a flower. You can see here, they're very, very clear. We can see these little parts that look like kind of a hot dog bun at the end of a stick. That is the anther. The anther is making this yellow dust. You can see it right here coating this bottom leaf. Well, the idea is that the pollen from the anther is kind of kind of float over on the air, or maybe a bee will carry it along, and get onto the pistil of another flower. And the pistil receives that pollen, and it actually transports it inside the flower. It goes down this tube, and the pollen will end up actually down here in the base of the flower, where it can start to form a new seed. <laughs>
We need to create characters. It's like what theater is all about. And the easiest way, I think, is to manipulate your voice. And it's fun. So let's play a game called To Be or Not To Be. Bonus points if you know what play it's it came from and fist bump if you did. Okay, To Be or Not To Be, we're just gonna say it in a whole lot of different voices, a lot of stereotypes. Here we go, angry two-year-old. To be or not to be, mean girl. To be or not to be. Tough guy. To be or not to be. Yeah, yeah, I kind of like that one. Uh, little old lady. To be or not to be, honey. <laughs> uh, bored teenager. To be or not to be. <sighs> Keep going, it's a lot of fun. How many characters can you come up with? How to completely create and complete a complete scene with improv in five steps. Step one, create a setting and add some details. Wow, really cool haunted house. But um, why is there a statue of a mummy holding a pumpkin full of snake heads? Step two, create character. Are you afraid of snakes because you're a circus performer? Yeah, that's right. Every time I walk the tightrope, they put a pool of snakes under me. And once I was even bit, I really don't like it, you know? I can help you out of here as your guide. I know a lot about this haunted house. I'm a specialist in ghosts. Step three, create a problem. Wait a minute, what time is it? It's not past four, is it? Because at four o'clock, the ghosts come to life and start terrorizing all the guests. Oh, no, it's only 4.05. Wait, step four, raise the stakes. If the ghosts come alive and, and terrorize us, I'm gonna freak out. Me too, and if I freak out, all these people might freak out and that could cause a riot. And if a riot gets caused, this place could burn down. It's really old. And if this place burns down, the bank next door could catch on fire and all the mortgage files could be destroyed. If we don't stop these ghosts, everybody's gonna lose their homes. Step five, resolution. Resolve the scene, but only using something you already created in the scene. Aren't ghosts afraid of snakes? These ones are. They died in a freak snake accident on a train or something. I swear it wasn't a movie. I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but maybe we could use the snake heads to scare the ghosts. Yes, we can terrorize the ghosts that are gonna terrorize us. Oh, okay, I guess. This is gonna be the best Halloween ever. And scene. teacher Jaquita and I teach writing on App School. One of the biggest problems I have with learners are run-on sentences. Sometimes learners try to squeeze everything they know into one sentence. In order to fix a run-on sentence, you have three options. One, find your run-on sentence and make it two sentences. Two, use a comma in a coordinating conjunction. Three, use a semicolon. The semicolon helps merge those two complete sentences together. See me in class for more. Hello, I am teacher Anissa and you're just in time to look at the letter of the day. The name of the letter is O. That's the name of the letter. This is uppercase O and lowercase O. Every letter has a sound. So O makes the sound ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Can you do it with me? Very good. And have you noticed when you make the ah uh, sound, your mouth looks like the letter O. Yay, it does, I see you doing it. Very good. Guess what? We're going to play a game. Find the ah, ah, olive. It can either be in the right hand or the left hand. Can you find it? Which hand do you think it's in? It is in the left. You are so right. And oh my goodness, you get to devour it. Let's devour it together. It's a goner. <laughs> Hello, young chefs. Today, I'm gonna teach you how to make this roast beef sandwich on a pita bread. This recipe is so good, so delicious, and so easy to make, you will love it. First, 
Melt the mozzarella cheese in a skillet and place a pita bread over it. Wait until there is a golden brown crust on the bottom. Place as many slices of roast beef as you like over the golden brown cheese. After that, take it to the oven and broil it at 400 degrees for a few seconds or until the meat changes its color. On the other pita bread, spread some mayonnaise blended with a mix of herbs, add some sliced tomatoes and chopped lettuce. Put the side with the meat over the one with lettuce and tomato. And that's it, enjoy it! Search for Daniel Mendo for other dinner recipes like this one and see you in class. Bye! Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. If you think this video would help a friend or loved one, be sure to hit that share button and invite them to the OutSchool family to help us on our mission to set learning free. We'll be posting videos each week, so if you've got a question or an idea on what kind of video you'd like to see as you build your homeschooling resource, please let us know in the comments below.